all right everyone welcome back so this is the last session for the track one for today and um this session will be um co-hosted by eric and manny but before i go on to do that i would like to do a brief introduction about eric and manny so eric is the lead product evangelist for aqua Suits, um open source digital experience product eric is also passionate about solving for the future of digital comes from leaving his first hand for the past 10 years. Eric also has been navigating the divide between people, process, and technology at more organization and global tech giants alike as he continues his journey to incite employees and engage customers through the power of digital marketing. Welcome, Eric. Welcome, thank you. All right, great. All right, so uh, Manny is also um, the manager of campaign operation, working with Aqua Campaign Studio and the world's only open marketing cloud. She joined Mautic in February 2019 and has become an Aqua since May 2019. Welcome, Manny. Hi, good morning, good afternoon. All right, good. So, Manny, it seems you, I, I, we, we, you, you spoke last year, right? I did. Oh, I think I handed the session too, right? Yes. <laughs> oh, interesting, interesting. That's great. All right, so thanks to Aqua for being a major sponsor for this event. And um, I'm glad we are having this session. So I'm going to leave the two of you to do the remaining part of your session. Then I will come back later where we can be able to go on to answer questions. All right? Great. All right, sounds good. Thank you very much, everyone. So I wanted to, uh, first of all, super excited to be here. We're talking about some really interesting things that are happening with Modic and at Acquia, some of the things and really the ways that we're using the tools and technology. And I thought it would be particularly important to um, not do this session just talking about the high level things, but really to bring in Marnie, who is someone who uses this tool pretty much every day. Uh, is, <laughs> he is our resident expert, our power user. So while I'll be kind of introducing some of the high level value between Acquia and Modic, and then talking a little bit about a few other things, really Marnie is the kind of day-to-day -day power user expert. And uh, Marnie, why don't you just kind of go over a little bit of uh, kind of your experience and we already got a nice little introduction. So maybe we can do this one uh, pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So pretty quick. Um, so uh, manager of uh, marketing operations here. So um, all of our internal campaigns, all of our you know scoring, lead routing, everything's flowing through the system. Everything you see on the site, anything you're engaging with, that's coming back into Campaign Studio. So not just you know external communications that are coming out, but we have our hands on all of the other things powering uh, lead collection, data appending, things like that. So. Um, yeah, lots, lots of good things with Campaign Studio. Awesome, great. And as I was already introduced, Eric Fullerton, I'm lead product evangelist at Acquia. And what I'm able to do, I have the really unique position where I get to talk to lots of our partners, our customers, our prospects, but really across lots of different industries. And this is where it becomes really exciting. You can see where the value of a, a tool and solution like Modic becomes really, really incredibly valuable and some areas where we're starting to see some groundbreaking and, and them kind of starting to use more open source tools for things like marketing automation. I was actually uh, recently, uh, until somewhat recently, the uh, product marketing lead for Modic when we acquired uh, the solution. So I do have some direct experience kind of managing and working with uh, the teams there as well. So let me just kind of get into our session agenda uh, pretty quickly. And, you know, the first thing is kind of I wanted to talk a little bit about Acquia just as a whole, but really more specifically around our relationship with, with Modic and the Modic community, why we think this makes so much sense and is a really good partnership. Um, from there, we actually wanted to talk through some really interesting things that have happened, uh, maybe even officially in the past year, around actually officially moving and being fully 100% on uh, on the platform uh, from Marketo. And you know, we, there's a lot of really interesting use cases here. There's a lot of things to unpack. And I think it's important for, for folks that are listening to, to kind of hear a little bit of that story because I think it's really validating to highlight all of the different types of use cases that Amata can, can help solve and meet. 
And then we're going to pass it over to, to Marnie. She's really going to take us through the ways that we're using this actively today. We'll talk through some of the most important integrations and some plans that we have a little bit around for, for the future. But And then we'll kind of go into a Q&A. &A. And, and we tried to not have too much content at the beginning of this because there is a really great opportunity to kind of talk through, you know, the, the applications, how we're using it, what the what the move was like, and wanted to make sure we left plenty of time for that. Yep. So the first thing I'll I'll cover off on is just kind of you know why Modic and, and Acquia. And I, I hope that folks have some background sense of this, but I wanted to just start here. You know, back in, in 2019, Acquia acquired Modic. You know, it's a, a marketing, of course everyone knows Modic. It's this you know, really fantastic tool around, you know, helping to engage with customers to orchestrate journeys. And the thing for, for Acquia, when we were, you know, the, the organization was making this decision is, yes, this makes a lot of sense because it has open source, root, open source roots. We firmly believe in the value of open source technology. I mean, that's really how we were founded. Those are our origins. And that's great. It's nice when something is aligned to that story, but really, it's because it fits with the, the goals of not only having open source technology, but having great open source technology that enables and allows people to, to build the types of experiences that they want. And you know, when we think about the value of being able to innovate faster, not having to you know, use these proprietary platforms that aren't appealing to all these different audiences, or just the concept of being locked into one specific marketing cloud, like Acquia was uh, when we were working with Marketo, and the ability to kind of build our own technology stack to integrate that stack, and then you know beyond that, with thinking about the concept of of data and you know being able to unify that data where it lives. Oftentimes, you'll see proprietary systems. What they're trying to do is actually own all of your content and own all of your data. And that's not really the way we, we think uh, the, the future of, of marketing technology should be. So one of the things that I wanted to share next is just to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, some of the things that we've learned from a selling perspective and, and how we've been able to see, like, what are the things that when we see our customers uh, acquire and use the tool that, that they've found to be most valuable? And, and we know that you know, the, the, there's a couple different key components here, but, and, and I just want to make a quick note that back in 2020, last year, Acquia, we opened kind of a, we relaunched our new open digital experience platform. And, you know, that did include the renaming of some of our products. And what we wanted to do was, you know, for our specific buyers, really kind of simplify what, what their understanding of that. So it was really mo more focused on like what they do. And, and that's why we refer to it as Campaign Studio at Acquia. And, and for the most part of this presentation, we'll refer to it as Campaign Studio, but the, the primary features and value that we're gonna talk about, of course, are very much aligned. So um, what I, what I kind of wanna talk through is like, what did we learn? Where, where have we seen the specific value of being able to use this solution of our customers seeing value in this solution? And, and, and I just kind of wanted to go through this because I thought it would be interesting just to get that sense of you know, where we're seeing the most momentum in terms of the features and capabilities. And the one of the biggest and easiest aspects of this is the ability to really be flexible in the way you use and, and start bringing the tool into your organization, being able to do pilot programs, being able to do $0 trial sandbox accounts, having a, a model that's really easy to understand and is really focused on accounts that you would need and the ability to expand beyond. And, and what's exciting about this is, you know, this is something that other solutions simply cannot do. If you look at the vast majority of, of the marketing automation technology that exists today, you can't just go do a quick $0 sandbox or be able to run a pilot program. We've been able to see the value of the tool because it's gone through a pilot and it's seen and proven success. And that was actually some of the key ways we've seen more and more adoption. Of course, we know that the time to market is so much faster than all you know all the other competitors in this space. It can take months, uh, quarters. Sometimes it can take even longer for other uh, other solutions in, in the market. But for this, you know, we've actually seen some specific customers have gotten set up and trained in as little as two weeks. And there's been you know some really great examples of of the t the customer success team that we have really just 
getting people up and running really, really quickly. And it, that's super valuable. Of course, everyone knows and talks about the, the value around being able to integrate with lots of different systems, whether they be bought or whether they be built. You know, there's this great story of, a, of another Modic event where, you know, someone had you know raised their hand and asked, oh, do you do an integration with uh, Line or with some other you know technology? And the answer at the time was no. But two days later, at the end of that specific conference, that integration was built and created. And that is the power of open source. That's the power of, of the Modic community. And what's great is, you know, whether you're connecting to a CMS, a CM, CRM, a CDP, a POS, a DMP. I mean, you could really make up any acronym. And, and the, what, what the power of Modic and Campaign Studio is, is the ability to really easily connect and integrate that. And the other, you know, the other piece that we th see a lot of value in is you know, having uh, the integrations that we've actually built out of the box with, with our technology. So we've been able to integrate this with our customer data platform for customers, been able to do that with our personalization solution. And of course, you know, I think the other value here is when you're extending this, you're, you're using this in maybe a, a larger system, you're maybe bringing around uh, multiple teams, multiple regions. The, the tool that we're using is you know, called Campaign Factories, it used to be known as Maestro. It's gonna help teams scale their marketing efforts. They can build campaigns that can be easily copied and localized. They can you know, use multiple brands and regions to kind of really you know, create all these great experiences, but not have to do all of them net new. And it really expands the power and value of the of this solution. So really, there, there's a lot of great things. And I, the reason I wanted to share that because is I wanted to you know provide that feedback around what we're seeing as the most beneficial and interesting components of the platform uh, for for the folks that were were listening in here today. So what's the next kind of thing I'm going to go into before I pass it off to our resident expert is really to talk a little bit about you know the acquisition of you know when when we kind of acquired Modic and and you know thinking about you know we, we our fundamental belief is that the world you know the it was the world's only open marketing cloud and we knew that the world really needed to move beyond these traditional closed legacy marketing solutions like Marketo because they just can't adapt they don't have that power of the community behind them and what we've done in the past um, since since we've made the acquisition is moved our entire marketing automation and campaigns practice from Marketo to, to Campaign Studio because we didn't really wanna be limited by marketing tools that weren't open, that couldn't change with the pace of innovation or that you know kind of burdened us with some costs and complexity. And we saw that the needs of our customers had really moved forward and, and we couldn't keep falling behind. And we were able to kind of really take, take a little bit of power in the way that we were shaping the experience that we were delivering now, that said, Acquia is a kind of large and very traditional B2B software company in the way that we're architected, and that's really tailored towards Marketo's target market. And we've seen a lot of great opportunities and, and a lot of great adoption in B2C and many other industries, including EDU. But B2B is an area that, you know, Marketo and the Adobe's of the world, they have this pretty strong hold, which is why I think this story is incredibly important in terms of validating that this platform can do all the things required for not just B2C or not just other industries, but B2B, those traditional use cases as well. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about really this kind of the concept of, you know, why when we're evaluating this and when we've seen this this head to head interaction, it's really, you know, the, the three primary values around the difference between Campaign Studio Marketo is is one that's this kind of freedom to innovate, which is, you know, we have these, you know, these different integrations you know, Marketo really doesn't offer any integrations outside of their digital ecosystem. It doesn't allow any real choice to actually pursue other systems or to build your own versions of Campaign Studio. And, and really the it's Campaign Studio's integrations, excuse me, and, and really the API first architecture of, of Modic and Campaign Studio, the way this was purpose built for integrations and all these hundreds of different plugins. And it's something that we're able to do and test and, and secure on Acquia really was a really important differentiator. And the other aspect is just more channels. I mean, when you look at a traditional system like Marketo or like Exact Target, which Salesforce uses, or maybe Adobe Campaign, those marketing automation solutions, they, are, they really can't adapt to a world beyond email. And we know the importance of being able to do that. And, and our marketing operations team, they, they were almost stifled by the, the kind of focus on email and the, the different automated campaign features that were really 
not really dis they were pretty disjointed. They were very inflexible. And what we're really excited for was the opportunity to help us kind of reach customers and prospects where they were. And that could be email, but that could also be direct. That, that, that could be social messages. That could be SMS. That could be web. That could be so much more. And then the other piece of this, of course, is around cost. We know the cost challenges around these traditional proprietary uh, solutions. And Marketo really hinders the ability to be quick and to be agile to change. We actually needed to have a Marketo specialist. We actually had to hire someone at Marketo to understand all of their product specific language and functions. And then that also requires a lot of in-house expertise. What's super exciting about about Campaign Studio is that it has all these intuitive visual tools and the terminology is like much more aligned to the way people use actual words. And, and what was really exciting is that we had, you know, we were able to do some really important simplification and we didn't have, you know, there are these charges for like more seats, more storage, more domains and more instances. So, you know, I can talk a little bit about the process, but what I really want to kind of focus on is, just the benefits and the opportunity that, that it's provided. And when you migrate from a system in, in Marketo, we had been on Marketo for nine years. It's a very long time to be on a specific system and it's gonna be hard work, but I think it's really important to, to you know, map and understand this process because this is really critical as we start to want to see more and more increase the increasing the adoption of Modic and and you know of course with us you know Campaign Studio but being able to see that you know this migration not only is doable but it's actually going to provide some very tangible benefits. The first is really you know migration is an opportunity to lay a better foundation for a lot of your marketing initiatives and you know when when it's done you should really kind of be able to do things the way you want to do them not just the, within the limits of what an automation platform uh, really lets you do. So for us, just some of the, the overall value and benefits of, of doing a migration was this full data refresh. I mean, we had contacts we hadn't interacted with in years. Now we kept all these records in our CRM, but we really chose not to port them over until we could kind of scrub them and develop a re-engagement campaign. We didn't actually bring them, them over at that time. And we also took the full opportunity to refresh our data. We updated email addresses, phone numbers, company information. Some of our contacts had new titles and others had moved to new companies entirely. And we, we really were able to fix all that. It was also a really great opportunity for, for us to kind of like declutter. We looked at many of the, the automations, the, the campaigns, the emails, the forms and the content, and they were created eight, seven years ago and they weren't really useful. They didn't really need to be created in Campaign Studio. So we didn't necessarily bring those along. And then we also really were able to do some auditing of kind of our implementation of Marketo and, and really were able to focus and optimize some key areas. We were able, able to optimize our campaigns. We were able to really think through the automations, all the different forms that we did, the emails, the content that we were creating, how we were doing tracking, the way that we were creating segments and personas, the scoring. There are so many benefits and, and values to being able to do a migration and, and not to say that it's not difficult or that it doesn't take some time, but the benefits are something that really can outweigh those challenges. And I think that that's, that's really important. And overall, I mean, when we did all that inventorying, we were able to really assess what we would need in, in Campaign Studio, what we would not, and it forced us to think through what would easily translate and start really making big decisions for you know what things we actually needed to be really flexible with and recreate in Campaign Studio, where we need to do other additional integrations. And, and I think it's really exciting to see that we got uh, so many of these benefits from just the concept of migration in general. But, but beyond that, there are also a lot of tangible benefits for us as an organization between the value of what we got with, with a Campaign Studio versus what we saw with, with Marketo. And, you know, we believed, you know, we acquired the, this technology because we fundamentally believed in it. And we did to see, expect to see some improvements in some key areas. But like, it's also really nice to see that all the benefits of the solution that you're moving to and that you're, you know, the, the, a lot of the reasons that you acquire the solution are actually the ones that happen when you move on to that solution as well. And, you know, we weren't necessarily surprised on this, but, but it is nice to see. And the first piece is just super, you know, important and critical. I mean, this just, it costs less. 
You know, in our case, it ended up being 65% less expensive than, than using Marketo, which frees us up to do lots of exciting things in terms of integrations, in terms of uh, new and you know, interesting campaigns that we can create and really effectively fund with that, with that open resource from, from moving fr the, from one solution to the other. And then, you know, Marketo, these, these automated campaign features, they can be a little bit cumbersome, a little bit dated. And, you know, the, the feature, you know, the campaign studio kind of campaign creation component like that, that campaign builder is just super fluid. You can easily drag it. You can view and edit a, rate, a bunch of all these different ranges of actions and decisions and filters. And that was super valuable for, for our, our marketing team, We're actually using a tool that was, you know, kind of built for modern marketers by, by the community and something that's really, really valuable. Beyond that, you know, there was just so many more possibilities in terms of the different types of creativity we could use, the pathways we could use to connect with customers. And when it comes to multi-channel, multi-touch campaigns, you need to have a little bit more sophistication. It can't be just batch and blast emails. And you know, we really needed to be able to show up everywhere and that functionality down into you know, the SMS or down into using things like dynamic content, which Marnie will touch on soon. That was really important and critical for us. And the other piece of this is that the learning curve on Marketo is steep. Right. Any any strategic digital marketer, they can quickly learn how to leverage campaign studios capabilities for us. You know, we have you had lots of you know folks who had come in and they had expertise, but, you know, maybe they didn't work at the company anymore. Maybe they, they you know, moved on to something else. And you know, when we really want to get our teams up and running and providing value really soon, having campaign studio is just so much easier for them to learn and to understand. And, you know, it's really, really easy for for our teams not just the ones that were dedicated to this, but the ones who maybe wanted to look in and view specific reports or data to, to see that value. And then beyond that, you know, using Campaign Studio in conjunction with some of our more kind of other other technologies, the ones around you know, personalization and data management, that really opened this kind of new world of possibilities for us. And this is what happens when you are purpose built for integration rather than being a solution that can integrate if you do a lot of custom work with it. So, you know, that's kind of it for my section. I, I really wanted to highlight the story and the narrative behind that move and the value that it provided us as an organization. But what I want to focus the, the rest of our time on really is, is the actual day-to-day -day operations, the value, like what we really see as an organization and, and the best person at our company to talk to. And I, I'm very thankful that Marty was willing and able to, to join me uh, today in, in this presentation. And, and I wanted to kind of talk and ask you know you marnie i kind of talked about the high level value of aquia and then we're moving into the move from aquia uh excuse me from marketo to, to campaign studio using monic mm -hmm. but how do we use this today i think that's what i think would be really valuable for folks as well sure, sure. um and i'll just you know start by saying like i myself is am a very open person so tmi has been through it thrown at me so i'm just going to share it all um <laughs> uh, the good thing though is that i i know that what i say it's not just like oh don't say that it's just aquia only needs to know that or whatever you know what we're doing everything's available for you know all the users um so i'm yeah really happy to get into it uh so i wanted to touch on um what you had you know, talked about when new team members go on. And so it's just a really fantastic win for us is that time that it takes to get new users um, up and running. Uh, we've had new team members join in various regions with varying degrees of experience. And it's been amazing to see how quickly someone can come in and create a campaign uh, or understand how the plugins are designed and set up um, or how, you know, the internal workflows are functioning within a campaign builder. So. I, I'm gonna also just yeah, break on a campaign builder for just a moment too. <laughs> so the visual builder, it's it's just so fluid and easy to use and understand and it's the hub. It's where a lot of things are going on right now. Um, so it's draggable and it acts like a whiteboard. And with that functionality, it's really a time saver on where, you know, if we have to do edits or if we need to add something in. And it makes sense when a component or node um, needs to be corrected. So if I'm reviewing work um, before somebody um, goes to publish it um, and I have to call out a you know, change or something like that, it's very clear. So in Marketo, I remember always having to like click down on something, take a bunch of notes on how something is done. Like this purple button is doing this because, you know, because of this, it just wasn't clear. 
So it's very straightforward now. And you know, our email coordinators, they've been able to get their hands on with campaign execution within a week. You know, we're, we're free to let them go. <laughs> and um, even our interns, you know, they're able to navigate around the system. And within a few weeks, I find them bumping up their access levels uh, because of the simplicity of the system. And it makes it, um, it makes it nice because if mistakes do happen, the investigation is, it's, the steps to do that are so short. So that's really fantastic. Um, but to summarize this point, um, with the great view we have, the overall strategy it's, it's better understood and it's shared by team members at all levels. So I just wanted to take that point that you had mentioned, um, Eric, about you know getting people up and running, like with the visualness and the fluidness and the flexibility of the builder, it's just been fantastic to get that started. Um, so I'm gonna yeah jump into how we're using it today. Um, so it's rather simple. Um, we're doing really two things. We're have our external you know, marketing communications go out to that, to our database, so prospects, customers, and partners. But we're also powering all of our internal workflows and automations. So anything in the system is really going to be one of those two things. And um, what we also did, and I know that the slide um, was up there, so I was just speaking to that. <laughs> so I don't know if you want to pull that back up. Um, but we really didn't just stop with um, equipping the marketing team with the ability to use the platform. So Campaign Factory has also allowed us to give various internal team members the ability to send communications. So our talent team, um, thank you, um, talent team, customer success, and R&D teams are able to send emails and create landing pages and forms as needed. Um, this is also the idea of shared success within a company. So that's how we have broken out, you know, Campaign Factory. But you know, I know you touched on this too that um, bringing people like bringing people up to the scale of the company, it's just, it's really great because you can flip these instances out in an, a matter of seconds. And so that's been really, really fantastic um, to get people up and running with um, your own internal tools. Um, so just something um, <clears throat> to talk about there. Yep, sorry, <laughs> thanks. Um, so gonna come into here. So this is a, just a quick snapshot that we have put together of the various different things that we're doing. Um, powering the tool at a high level. So we have several automations going on. Um, we're able to run everything out of Campaign Studio. That's our central hub. Uh, we have so much segmentation and personalization going on within the tool, both internal and external, as we can see here. We score and route and append data while using Campaign Studio. Um, you know, I checked and I counted the campaigns for the um, Q2, and we're not even done with Q2, and we already have supported and run different automations to go into 475 plus campaigns. <laughs> so all of that is happening um, within Campaign Studio. I mean, obviously nobody's really monitoring that. It's something that we set up and we let run. So that's fantastic. Um, I was just blown away by that number when I went to go look at it earlier. <laughs> and then also some other counts here too. You know, I've, I've checked, like we've already sent 78 emails out this month. Um, you know, and it's really, um, and that's also North America too. And there's really only two of us doing that. So it's been really great to get this up and running and just things out the door. Um, but also we're doing a lot of different um, campaigns for our stakeholders. So listed here, the various different campaigns types that we do, you know, we are fully supporting an ABM program, we support the partner program, white space, and then, you know, the various communications that have to go to customers and also onboarding and nurturing and um, product information. Um, so lots of things going on here, which has been uh, really fantastic um, to get these to get these out and um, kind of you know numeric values to them is really great. Um, so I think if we go to the next slide, um, I'm going to talk about some integrations. So although we have many integrations, um, I've put here of just what we're using as like the top five. These are what I know I have my hands on and what the team has been working on to build over the last you know, couple of months. Um, so everything here, you know, it's either we're gathering leads, we're making automations more simple, or we're creating some sort of you know, reporting for the team. So something that I want to, yeah, um, just pause on here is you know, Zoom. Zoom's become huge within the last year, <laughs> but it is also what we are currently using to power our various webinars. And so, 
already, you know, various manual steps have been taken out of the process from when we were using Marketo. Um, this integration, you know, designed specifically for um, Campaign Studio has just been, it's been so great. A lot of things are now automated. <laughs> um, things just work. It's fantastic. Um, so Salesforce is obviously a big one. That's where we have all of our internal information. Um, but form creation, um, I, I think it's really great here to just um, talk about um, number three and five. So Site Studio and CDP, we're integrating with both of those. Um, we're integrating with our suite of tools. And that is just such a win internally. So with the customer data platform, it's also great because other teams are able to segment what they want. They're able to really decide the type of you know, lists they want, the filters they want to create different you know, cohorts to get communications out to. And with them able to get their hands on that, it flows directly into Campaign Studio. So they can just tell me, I want this list. I'm like, great, that's where the email's going. <laughs> or that's um, who's getting updated internally with some append values. You know, that, that's just been a really great way to just share the success of our marketing tools. Um, and then Domo. Um, Domo is a, a tool that we're using for reporting. And just so, somebody on the marketing operations team was able to set this up. Um, and we're able to have this really great flexible reporting um, outside of the tool that is shareable with um, with our various, you know, marketing counterparts in sales, you know, all sorts of teams are able to get in there and view it. So it's been a really great win. It's taken out, you know, so much, um, everybody needing a login, you know, it, it's just, it's been a really great win for us to be able to get that information, you know, out of the system and in a centralized location. Um, so I think if, yes, we go on to the next slide, we're gonna just probably talk about what's next. Um, I am speaking tomorrow on dynamic content. So this is something that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, <laughs> there has been a lot of great um, product updates for dynamic content. Um, and specifically, if there are any users on today, you could probably speak to the fact that the new email build right way with it. So dynamic content's um, a way that we're gonna help to continue to develop our you know, personalization efforts. Um, CDP integration, I'm really hoping to have more use cases. You know, that's something that we are slowly getting to, um, but the integration's there. So what's next here is just, you know, having some more success stories and wins for that. Um, we have a lot of plugins that are on board too, um, that are, are on deck too. So Drift, Bright Talk, I know that we're making some, you know, more, um, advancements with LinkedIn as well. So we're going to have a lot more things um, that we can be able to talk about. Uh, custom objects. Um, if you haven't gotten into custom objects too much, um, I could probably talk for 45 minutes on that <laughs> just alone. So um, that could possibly be a session someday. Um, but look to custom objects for, you know, even greater ways to segment your data and have, you know, all sorts of data relation tables. So we're really excited about that. Um, it's also going to be an ability to have dynamic, excuse me, custom objects display as these personalization tokens within the different work that you're doing on landing pages and emails. So a lot of great things coming with that. And then uh, utilizing more channels. So, you know, um, we were using Marketo completely, you know, email centric. We really want to be able to have more use cases to share with everybody about the different multi-touch channels that we can do um, all within Campaign Builder. Um, so I don't know if there's another slide after this. Yeah, so Q&A, um, ready for, yeah, whatever questions might come, but um, thank you, Eric, and hope yeah, I didn't run through that too quickly. <laughs> well, it, was, it was great. I mean, I think that the, the benefits, it's it's nice because when we're talking about the high value benefits that we would potentially see from the solution, and then you actually talk about the day-to-day -day using of it and it's validated, you know, not just by some of, you know, people who've been, you know, using the platform for a while, but this kind of mm -hmm. traditional B2B use case, which is a market that, you know, we're really seeing a, a really great opportunity for adoption of, of Modic overall. So, it's it's not surprising, but it's nice to see that those are the types of things that that actually are, are born in, in reality. So you know we're really excited to, and, and I'm happy to talk a little bit more about uh, if if people are curious about about CDP and how we're actually using that in the future. Um, we were just talking about this uh, 
just yesterday. So there's a lot of really exciting stuff going on and the ability for integrations and new channels is, is really second to none. So that's, that's the biggest benefit uh, for, for us in terms of moving forward as we start to think about, you know, moving around, moving from, from kind of sending emails and being on websites to really that digital experience that we're trying to deliver. All right, thanks so much, Eric and Manny. So um, it's time for questions. So we have one question, and um, the person is asking, that is Nimesh, is asking how different is Aqua Campaign Studio than Maltic himself? So what's the difference between Aqua Studio and Maltic? Um, really, really, it's going to be the name. <laughs> so Maltic's going to be the community version that um, probably a lot of people here are familiar with. Uh, Campaign Studio is the open marketing cloud that's supported by Acquia. So that is what is coming along with, you know, the support with the, you know, limitless abilities to have all sorts of things like seats, contact levels and things like that. Um, so it's really just a name. <laughs> but um, right. Eric, I know you're closer to product, so I will let you. Yeah, know. well, I think about what I, I think about Campaign Factory, maybe there a little bit as an area where we are ha you know, having multiple modic instances. So when you have, you know, when you're thinking about scale and having to send, you know, millions and millions of emails or being able to have multiple different instances and you know, kind of just providing the the kind of underpinnings from maybe a scale and security perspective. And that's really where we we are able to do that. Now, I mean, that's still, you know, it is it is at cost to some degree because, you know, it's there's hosting components to it as well. Um, stuff that people could do uh, on their own if they wanted to. And they're certainly welcome to. Um, but we're able to kind of pull away some of that that challenge around support, around hosting and around kind of scalability of, of specific features. And, you know, when you're trying to when we're using this for you know, at, at up to enterprise grade, you know, for, for some customers, that's really, really important and valuable. Um, but it's very similar to the traditional way that, you know, Drupal and Acquia uh, are, are, you know, related in that, you know, there's an open source tool called Drupal and Acquia provides the hosting, the security, the scale and the support to make sure that, you know, you can get what you need if you have a, a large team and your business depends on getting out communications today. All right, cool. All right, thanks. So another question is um, from Kesh, Kesha. He's um, asking, would new learning and new futures on Campus Studio make their way to open source Mautic and Mautic documentation? So he's asking about, so the, um, the, the cloud platform is asking about the features that we are added to the cloud platform. Is, is there any plan to bring some of those features into the open source version? Um, so I think that there may be some features that were originally built by the team, like the product team here. Um, and I think the, well, you know, I think that's a conversation between the community, like ideally, at least for the documentation component to it. Um, I, honestly, I would love to hear maybe, you know, someone like Ruth may have a good answer to that. Um, I don't want to necessarily speak for how the, the community versus the product new features, like, there are some things that we are trying to build, but you know, for the most part, it's around enhancements to the existing components that are built into the community to really help them bring bring them up market. So, you know, we can go into a, a customer that has, you know, you know, needs to send you know millions of emails or has, you know, is, is, is a thousand people, and like we have, you know, customers today that have thousands of you know specific. You know, customers or you know things that you know thousands of employees are reaching out to to hundreds of thousands or millions of customers, and we may build some features just specific for those customers that wouldn't necessarily make it back into the platform at least automatically. But I think that becomes a a kind of a larger conversation on how that value exchange would work. At the same time, we do have teams at Acquia who are contributing to the Mata community with features. So it's kind of like an interesting piece of it. A lot of ours are you know, towards specific customers where we also are trying to make sure that we have a commitment to providing new features and innovation and we're able to you know, put in hours to help the community grow and be stronger overall. All right, thanks so much, Eric. So I would like to add to that. So what I'm going to add to that is that, um, Kesh, so tomorrow there will be a community panel session 
So you might want to ask that. So is it is going to be a session between Aqua and the multi-community leadership. So you might want to also um, join that session tomorrow and then yeah, get more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, but 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 Ruth, Ruth, the project lead is trying to um, put some um, is trying to answer in the chat. So she's saying, yeah, some of the plugins we are looking at bringing them over into the community as open source. Okay. Um, look, at open source plugins, we are going through a process with the legal team at Aqua at the moment. Plus, by default, the Aqua team will push all bug fixes and features over to the community now as part of their definition of done. We have to review and test them in the multi before we can release them. To. Oh, that's great to know. Yeah. All right. Good. Yeah. That's a good. Thing. Awesome. That's great. Thank right. you. All right, thanks so much, Ruth, for that. All right, so let me ask you, um, relating to Aqua now, how long does it take for you to be able to migrate from Marketo to um, Aqua Company Studio? Yeah, I can, I can take that one. <laughs> so, uh, you know, no secret, we were acquired about two years ago, and we were fully up and running in August of 2020. So that's over a year. Um, I will say that most of that time was trying to get off of Marketo. The build on the modic side really was not a big heavy lift. It was the research we had to do into all these programs. It was, you know, all of the, you know, data cleansing, making sure we weren't bringing over bad things into our new instance. Um, so I will, I, I won't make that any kind of secret. You know, it did take over a year to fully migrate. Um, Really, it was because we had to dig out nine years worth <laughs> of automations to get it out of um, Marketo. And, you know, Marketo is not going to make that easy. They want you to stay. It's a proprietary system. So they're going to make it difficult. They're not going to freely, you know, help you. They're not going to give you any type of, you know, <laughs> easy ability to get that done. And so it really was. Um, the effort was really from the Marketo side. And I really don't want to say that to scare anybody from, you know, having to leave these tools. Um, I mean, it, it was freeing. I can't tell you how many people were so excited to be able to set something up for the new time, you know, get naming conventions down. Um, just like the oohs and ahs I would see at the new campaign builder. Like, it's like, we're centralizing this now. Something's not here, there, and there. It's all in one place. Um, and so, you know, a lot of that was um, was really nice and freeing. But, um, you know, we uh, we had a lot going on in there. <laughs> it was a lot to dig out. And, you know, our Salesforce, you know, integration as well was also a big part of that. Um, we got that plug in up and running um, and ready to go. And so we really didn't want to make any moves until that was absolutely set in stone. And so um, that's that's kind of the story. <laughs> yeah. And the only other thing I would add is like you said, like so much of it was trying to like pry these things out of Marketo because mm -hmm. they're, they're making this kind of difficult on purpose. And that's the difference yeah. between these two types of solutions. One's very flexible, one's very not. And uh, that's, that's where the, the bulk of that time comes as Marnie talked about, but she gave a, a great answer better, better than I could have given for sure. All right. That, that, that's good. Okay, great. So another question is, um, where can you use dynamic content? Um, yeah, so dynamic content is a full feature on the tool. You can use it on landing pages. You can use it in emails. You could use it on, you know, forms if you really wanted to. Um, it's, you know, a really great tool to be able to personalize. You just have to make sure that your filters are like in place before it goes. But um, if anybody does have their hands on it, you know, you can access that through the component section or you can access it right within any of the builders as well. Um, but I, I am speaking on that. Like I said, tomorrow it's near and dear to my heart. So I, if, if you're curious, I encourage you to join that. <laughs> I'll be doing a, a demo as well. Uh, perfect. Great. Okay, so one more question before we go. So um, does Campus Studio have... Um, social integration do you integrate with social media platforms yes um yeah. we currently do have social integrations um twitter's a big one and we're also building out 
uh, a LinkedIn um, integration, and that's going to be more for uh, lead capture. Um, but there are, you know, various ways to have social messages as well as, you know, like the retweet abilities and things like that. Um, but Eric, I don't know if you have anything to add on on that as well. Um, oh, and I'm so sorry, I forgot about Facebook. <laughs> we do have a Facebook integration as well um, that we built out. Um, so yeah, there's there's definitely ways to utilize social. All right. Okay. So, so, so. okay, Eric, go on, please. No, I said I think that was right on. That's back to back. All right. Yeah, that's All right. Uh, that's great. All right. So there was one thing um, I get to understand from the Facebook conference about maybe two or three weeks ago, where they talked about one inbox for Instagram and um, Facebook. So that might be something you might also want to look into. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we got no more um, questions. And uh, at this point, I would like to thank both um, Eric and Manny for coming through. And thanks for your time this afternoon. And the presentation was awesome. And um, the questions, the answers were also great. Thank you so much. No, thank thank you. you. All right. Bye. Bye.